Many parents provide their children with cell phones as an added security measure, having the ability to reach out and be, be reached at all times. But growing concerns over the health risks are beginning to outweigh the benefits, especially for young children. In fact, new research is showing children could be affected in their mother's womb. The concerns are outlined in a new book called Disconnect. The author is with us this morning. We are pleased to welcome back to the show Dr. Deborah Davis, founder of the and president of the Environmental Health Trust. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. Yeah, great to have you. So, my goodness, cell phones, they're just ubiquitous nowadays. Why um, is it that we're not hearing about the dangers of cell phones? Well, we all like them and use them a great deal, but the fact is a cell phone is a two-way microwave radio. And we used to think the microwaves were totally benign and had no effect because they are, in fact, very weak. Okay. But research now conducted in Israel, France, Finland, Japan, outside of the United States, has consistently shown that the weak non-ionizing radiation from cell phones has biological effects. It can damage sperm. It can damage brain cells, and we ought to be careful about what it means for our long term. And that's why a number of governments are issuing precautionary advice, especially for children. Well, and just a handful of years ago, we were using them sporadically, and now it's like nonstop. Right. Right next to your ear or in your pocket. Is it the proximity that's the problem? Because we think microwave ovens seem fine. No, that's exactly the point. It's the proximity that's the problem. In fact, phones are only tested in two places. They're tested with a spacer from your ear and a spacer from your hip. They are never tested in the pocket. That's why the FCC is issuing a notice now for additional information about cell phone uh, safety. Because if phones were tested in the pocket, they would actually not be legal as currently used. If you put a phone in your pocket, you're increasing the radiation into your body dramatically. And that is what is in fine print warnings now that you can find with all of the smartphones that are sold, but nobody reads them. You can find that on our website, fine print warnings at wow. environmentalhealthtrust.org, that tells you that you're supposed to use an iPhone 4S uh, 0.98 inches from the body, 2.54 centimeters, or in fact, the different lengths for different phones, yeah. the Blackberry, the Droid, they all come up with why, why you should keep the phone off the body. So you've been helping get the word out there that this is a danger, um, and there's starting to be some studies. Tell me about the new Yale study that just came out. Well, the chief of OBGYN uh, at Yale University, Hugh Taylor, led a team of researchers that exposed mice prenatally when they were pregnant to cell phone radiation. And at the end, looked at those mice, it looked at their brains mm -hmm. and looked at how they behaved. They found that cell phone exposed mice had significantly more hyperactivity. Mm. And they also found that cell phone exposed mice had brains that didn't work as well. Now that was a very important study published in a Nature publication and peer reviewed just last month. In addition to that work, other research has found similar results done in Turkey, in Greece, where prenatal exposure to rabbits and rats has resulted in animals with smaller brains and more damage to their brains. Wow. Okay, so has there been any research on humans as well in terms of brain cancer or what might be happening inside the brain when it's next to your head? We well, see, that's where the, we have the problem. Brain cancer is a terrible disease. It takes many, many decades to develop. There are some studies. But having sat, as I did, at the Cancer Institute here in Pittsburgh and watched the data develop over lung cancer and tobacco and the data on asbestos mm. and lung cancer, mm. we don't want to have to wait 40 years for proof, definitive proof of human harm. We've got reasons for concern now, mm. and that's why the governments of Finland and France are issuing warnings. I'm actually working with people now in those countries to develop more advice that the governments are issuing. In fact, Israel has created a national institute on cell phone safety. Wow, so you're likening this to asbestos or cigarette smoking that it took that many years to find out and we could be doing the same thing with our cell phones right now. Except that cell phones have a lot of positive functions in our society, so we yeah. wanna be using them in a smarter way. I think mm -hmm. the story is more like with cars. We know that we can make cars safer and yeah. we've finally done that. There was a lot of resistance to doing it. We need to make cell phones hmm. as safe as possible. We need to design them with smarter antennas and better configurations and cases like this Pong case that I, that I use. Okay. This actually diffuses the signal so that you oh. do not get as much radiation coming into your body huh. as you do without it. And that kind of, of thing can be used 
these phones could be designed and sold with these cases rather than yeah. right now you have to buy this one separately. Okay. And I'm not selling it. I'm just telling you sure. that I have determined that it does diffuse the signal. Well, we've got some tips because like you said, people are not just going to give up their phones. Let's be real here. Right. Um, so let me run through these and you tell me what, what we should be doing. Number one, don't hold a cell phone directly up to your head. So what would be a better alternative? Speaker phone, headset, um, texting is always better and uh, generally use the phone with something so that you can hear. Now, I actually find I can hear better with this thing here. <laughs> it, it allows me to li actually listen. But and wait, anything that actually is not, is not just a fake phone. It really oh, plugs no, no. in. Oh, it, that is it hilarious. Does work. It does work. I love and, it. and the advantage is when you get old like me, you can actually hear. Yeah, and I always liked you could, you know, walk around the house like that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so you can stick right. it on your head. Okay. Um, and then pregnant women. We talked about that study. Pregnant women should keep cell phones away from their abdomen, prospective fathers out of the pocket. Absolutely. Men who keep phones in their pockets have reduced sperm count, and that's not a joke. It also, the sperm is more damaged. There's more damage to the DNA on the sperm. And those studies have been done at the Cleveland Clinic wow. and a number of other major institutions around the world. So it's not like one study alone. It what just a, makes sense. And you say don't allow children to play with or use your cell phone. Unless it's on airplane mode or disconnected from the internet. Because huh. all of those apps are a problem. The American Academy of Pediatrics just last week issued a letter to the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission urging that they revise the standards for cell phones precisely because so many young children are using these devices and they've never been tested for use by the developing brain and young children. So even if it's not up to their ear, if they're playing on the iPad and it's connected to the internet, that's not well, good either? Well, because a child's body is so small, their arms are so much shorter than I ours, see. that they're going to get a lot more exposure just because mm. they are so tiny and they're developing. And again, the American Academy of Pediatrics has issued a very strong warning about children using these devices generally. Children don't need cell phones, they need parents. And if your child, if you're worried about safety of your child, you need to see where they are in their, in their environment and who is with them. The idea that your child's gonna have, be in an emergency and be able to call you is really quite questionable. Yeah, interesting. Okay, what about, um, you say you specially adapted antennas when you're in the car. Oh, absolutely. The cars now that have the antennas built in are in fact much, much safer because otherwise, if you're in a car and you hold this phone up to your head, your head becomes the antenna. And as you're driving through space, the car will be searching, the antenna will be searching for the next signal from the tower, and half of the radiation gets into your head. Huh. Wow. So that's why you want to use the car antenna. And you can get a cheap adapter as well for old, old cars. It plugs into the cigarette lighter, Great. Uh, which most of us don't use anymore. Sure. But you can use it to get the antenna into it. That's the safe way to use a phone when you're traveling. And of course, do not text and drive. Yeah. It's very, very dangerous. And then lastly, and this is not even a cell phone thing, but the wireless router you have at home that you, just for using your regular computer, you say you should turn that off at night. You want to be careful where it's located. If you've got it located, as we do in our home, in, in a closet in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's not such a big deal. Distance is your friend. The further away you are, the better off you are. And a lot of people find that if they turn their router off at night, it's, it's, it's easier. But just remember, do not have your router in your bedroom. Do not have your cordless phone next to the head of your bed. In fact, the Israeli government thinks, and so do the French, that people should not be using cordless phones in their homes because cordless phones are also emitting radiation 24-7. Wow. They design them now so that they don't do that in Europe. But our cordless phones tend to be on 24-7, and we don't need that exposure. We I'm really thinking don't. everyone watching is going, uh, that's me, it's right next to my bed. How far away does it need to be? Oh, I think just a few feet is fine. But okay. the fact of the matter is, we recommend that you don't have a cordless phone because of safety, security, and speed. L corded landlines will work when everything else goes out. We know that, yeah. and they're much, much safer, they're much more secure, and you're reducing whatever long-term health issues we have to be concerned about right now. We are in the middle of an experiment on ourselves. We have no idea what the long-term mm. consequences will be, but yeah. governments of France and Finland and Israel and a number of countries that are very sophisticated are deeply concerned, and that's why our website at environmentalhealthtrust.org has lots of information about simple things you can do, Great. and we're working with physicians and businesses around the country to promote this awareness. Thank you so much for all the great information. Thank you. All right, and if you'd like to learn more about how you should disconnect, you can look for Dr. Deborah Davis's book online and in bookstores. You'll find the link to her website as well at kdka.com/ptl.